Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here, we've got an A1278 here, 3 woman five board, and we've got liquid damage on it, and we found liquid damage under the foam pad under there, and we're going to have to give this a bit of a clean up, hopefully we've got another janitorial job. Uh, the janitorial jobs are good for this time of the night. This doesn't require a lot of brain work, because my brain is pretty much gone to sleep already. Ah, oh, always catches me out. The MacBook Airs and such, they require the uh, T5 drive, but for 1278s you want the T6. And it catches me every time. Let's see, we've got another person running around with a old spinning rust drive. It's amazing that people still use those. I mean, I know I use one in my desktop, a nice big 4 terabyte, but as a primary drive, uh, on a laptop, that's just painful. Like there was that one that I fixed the other day, and it just took forever to boot. Now we've got some nice fluffy in there, that will help with the cooling, sarcastically. Yeah, we'll clean that up later. Goodness knows what that contains. Get all these screws out. Uh, missing any. Yeah, we've got all the connectors to deal with. I do wish there was an easy way of getting those keyboard connectors on and off. At least on the MacBook Airs, you can take the battery out and it gives you pretty easy access. I do believe you can... Oh, not on this model. On some of them, you can remove the separator and uh, it gives you easy access, but... Uh, oh, thank goodness that camera came out all right. Been a couple of people who have suffered the indignity of the cables coming out of that camera connector in the recent week. It's not very fun. Oh great, that's just jammed in there. Okay, okay you're fine. I just needed a bit of a different technique. Get the DC inboard out. Oh boy, that means we've got to do the microphone. Again, no one yet has told me how to get the microphone out properly. If there is indeed a proper way. Instead, what I resort to is just stabbing and levering at it, and I really don't like that. I would sincerely prefer not to be stabbing and levering at it to get it out. I certainly won't just yank at it. I'm almost certain that would cause considerably more damage than what I'm doing here. But imagine if you applied heat. It would help sort of like get that glue to come off a little bit easier. Okay, chaps, we're coming out. Seems every time I do this, I always think I've got a cable that I've missed. There we go. And we're free. So you can see what's on the other side. Okay, because we've got our corrosion around here. Let's have a look for it under here, and I think I can see it's a little bit ugly there. Especially when you're out of focus. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. Let me readjust. Looks like... It. Okay, this looks like... Well, my first impression is mice, but I think that's just because it's under the microscope, so I'm going to have to say cockroaches or something. I don't know, but that's bloody hideous. Mm. 
A little bit of corrosion up there. That inductor looks like it's taken some heat. This one here. I don't know what it's for. Let's see, it's got that discoloration there. Have a look and see what that's for. Let's see what I, you're the one directly about the chip. You're actually you're a capacitor. Oh wow. Yeah. Did not expect that. And you are keyboard backlight driver and detection. Five VSO keyboard. Okay, so I wonder if that's short to ground. Bring up the multimeter. Oh, the multimeter's already there. Okay, you are working. Let's have a look. No, you're okay. Just looked a little bit suspicious, like it'd taken a bit of heat. You can never be sure, yes. Sometimes you have jobs where the worst looking part is not at fault. And then you have other jobs where it is at fault. So there's no real 100% guarantee. This all down here is going to be a nightmare because a lot of these... Yeah, so you are you a Veer? Okay. Well, you two are. That's a bit gross. But you expect that from machines this age. Yeah, right. So you, yeah, you're a mess. Now this is definitely going to be a janitorial job for sure. Let's take this DC. Yeah. So the remains of one of our culprits, and that looks suspiciously cockroach-like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like so that. There, that could be trouble. Via. Good thing about having all this on record is I can. Yeah, uh, you're going to cause trouble. I can always come back and have a look at what I scratched out. I have no idea what you even go to. Yeah, tough call, tough call. Do a clean off all this. And then work on it, or do I leave it be? I really desperately want... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to brush it off. I'm not going to ultrasonic it. I am going to brush it off. Oh dear lord. I don't know why I say that. I'm not religious. Habit, I guess. And I suppose if I was religious, that'd be probably something blasphemous. Oh well. Stay well away from that. Very happy to have a good fume extractor like this. Saves me inhaling all that trash. Yeah, the first thing I think I'll attack is this audio section up here. Because that's absolutely 100% going to need replacing. Um, yeah, that BGA is going to need replacing too, so that's going to be a bit of fun. I'd be extraordinarily surprised if there was... I'm going to just flux that connector too. Ah, no. It's disgusting. Ah, no. Ah. 
God damn. I drowned the toothbrush in alcohol to clean off the trash that I had picked up from the circuit board. But then as I moved it from right to left over my leg, it dripped on my leg. So then all of a sudden all I could think of was that I had a whole bunch of cockroach trash dripping on my leg. So then I picked up the nearest paper towel and rubbed my leg down. And to realise that it was actually embedded with flux. And then I had flux on my leg along with cockroach trash. And it was just turning into a wonderful evening. Fortunately in the end I found a clean paper towel and clean alcohol and did the job properly. I'm going to take that cap off first and see if I can inspect the balls on the chip. But really, uh, probably, no, I'm going to just take that chip off. There we go. That pad wasn't even there. I sure hope I've got a stencil for this one. Actually, that's, that's not too bad. Maybe I... Yeah. Well, I've stuffed it up now, I think. Yeah. Let's see. As long as I don't lose my orientation here, I might be okay. Okay, so it reads correctly at this side. Maybe I could have gotten away with just fluxing it out. It just didn't... just didn't seem like I could. That bottom left ball is problematic looking. Now remember, I can't actually touch these with the soldering iron because if I do that, I'll change the balance of the... well, I'll change the distribution of the um, solder. Okay, so you can see that... I'm just going to flip this over. I said we're just going to... ah, frickin' heck. Sure, do it whichever way you want, little chip. It's your life. Yeah, I'm thinking that chip probably could be fine, but now that I'm looking... Good God, the chip is just obsessed with... Con <sighs> anyway, the, what I'm trying to say is, looking around here, I probably should clean this up. There's a fair bit of corrosion and gunk in there, so it would be... a reasonable thing to do is to just re-ball it. It may well have just... It may well have been fine if I'd left it and just placed it back down and reflowed everything. But I'm not sure I'd be willing to send it back in that state. If it was my own machine, I'd probably take the risk. Thank you, Hacko. Alright, now this pad here is looking not so happy. Looking happier. Almost happy. Come on, take your... There you go. Take your Xenex. Now, I suppose the... If we're going to be responsible, we should probably just discard this chip. We don't know what damage has occurred to it because of that corrosion. We'll just take it from an existing board. And have to re-ball it. Uh, oh, hilarious. That cap's missing on this one. And it's actually been knocked off. Alright. So, I guess we get to use my software. So it's this cap here. 
and it's a 10 microfarad 401 6.3 volts so find a part 10 microfarad 402 6.3 volt search I mean these things should be everywhere but let's find something that we can use Okay, it's on the 165, and I've got one of those handy. Uh, thank you. And on the 165, looks like I've got a whole bank of them. Okay, the only thing is that, okay, they're all 20%, so that's good. Let's see. C1050. Alright, let's bring up the 165. C1050. So uh, this one here is one of them. So we'll grab that. I don't even have to pretend to shill. Well, I guess shilling is pretending. I don't even have to shill because this is legit use. And it's not the first time I've used it since I've written that feature. When you don't have multiple copies of every board on hand, it makes it a lot easier for you to get your parts. Oh, it's a stubborn little part. I guess I'm expecting too much for it to just pop right off. There we go. Sure, hope it's the right size. Yep. Where the? Seriously, I just got that. Ah, found it. Alright, I guess now we've got to do the BGA. Well, in this case, we definitely do need to take it from the right place. I've got more on order about for tonight. It's the only one I've got. Oh, that looked healthy. Now, I've generally found iPhone stencils usually cover us pretty good. So let's try our luck. Let's see. I seem to have something obstructing me. I should really be leaving these in the alcohol. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's get some dry nasty paste. Good old dry nasty paste. Well, this is going to be a massive overkill. I think that should do the job. And we now change over to a slower setting, lower setting on the quick. And we just bake it. No active blowing. We just treat it like we've Got it in the oven, the reflow oven, and let it do its thing. And I'm just hoping the stencil doesn't pop. Usually it doesn't when I do it from a distance like this. 
It always seems to take a bit longer, but when you've only usually got to do it once, it overall takes less time. And I think we can start swirling in soon. There we go. I think we're done. Now the reason why the stencil usually shouldn't pop when you're doing it the slow way is because you're giving enough time for that stencil to wick out the heat to its entire area. So it sort of evenly, slowly, progressively um, comes up to temperature as a whole unit rather than just one small area. Because if you do it to just one small area, that small area expands fast compared to the rest and it pushes out, you know, there's pressure applied to the inner area of the stencil and naturally then of course it just causes the rest of it to pop and buckle. I think that looks pretty good. I don't think I need to hit that again. So we're just going to leave those as they are. They're not the biggest balls, but they're good enough for the job. There is a little bit of junk there on one of those inner pads. I am not going to try and solder that out. I'll just see if I can... There you go. Just scratch it off. Because you can guarantee if I try to solder that out, I probably would have picked up a bunch of other junk. And what have we got here? Got a bit of a. What are you? Okay, you're just a bit of random trash. Heaps. Well, we'll leave it at that. And we'll get to work on the other areas of the board. That backlight driver does not look very healthy. So it looks like we've got more flux and boil. Get that fizzing action going. Come on. Come on, little driver. Fizz out all that junk that's around your balls. Oh, smells bad. It smells real bad. Uh. Alright, well, there's no real nice way of doing this, so we're just going to have to go at it.
Oh, it smells just disgusting. It's that fried cockroach poop. I'm just, they're probably okay, but I'm taking them off. Honestly, this, uh, it's truly disgusting. Oh. My fume extractor is good, but this stuff is a mighty powerful stench. Yeah, this SMC has to come off. I cannot see a good outcome if I don't. Got a little carried away there. Okay. Much better. Okay, I need to put that part back on. I need to put that somewhere special. Let's just heat up the rest of this. Grab that cap out of there. I was unusually lucky. I genuinely was expecting that to go flying off. to be no shortage of this yeah there's still the silicon epoxy whatever it is holding down the underside of the SMC I seem to be having a hard time getting that out I also don't want to scratch up the board too much I mean, you don't have to get it all out, it's just that it can sometimes make it a little bit tricky when you're trying to pull the SMC off. You just sit there and you're cooking and you're cooking and you're cooking and you can't seem to get the SMC to let go. I swear this... Yeah, I knew there was a little bit left under there. Alright, trying to get the SMC off. torture ourselves with some more dreadful cockroach smells.
Nope. Got a problem with tweezers not opening enough. Yeah, we we're right to take that off. That there doesn't look quite as bad, but there's a lot of residual gunk in there. And so it might have worked for a little bit, but ultimately it would have come crashing down on us. At least that's the nice thing about working for yourself, is you get to choose what level of risk you want to play. So if you feel that this is over the top, and that it's an unnecessary waste of time, then that's your choice. And you can get to take the risk. Let's clean that up. But yeah, as I often say, it's not that one way is specifically within a range anyway. Not that one way is specifically better than the other. It's just a case of what are you happy with? And you know, is the customer happy? Does it come back later? Yeah, so it's, it's the great thing about working for yourself is you get to make all that choice or make that choice and you know, it's your own reputation one way or another. I mean, for sure, you definitely make plenty of mistakes. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> It can be a very expensive process initially and it's still expensive for many years, always will be. But the rewards are there if you want them. Yeah, some people are better, at, some people just work better when it's, um, yeah, they've got an employer and they don't have to deal with all the daily business stuff. Now the people prefer to manage a lot more of it or work better that way. All right, now the question is going to be, will that SMC have been stuffed or will it still work? So I guess we'll, we'll give it a go using the existing SMC. Like I said, the corrosion wasn't that bad under there. It was enough that I personally would be worried that it will come back in a few months with issues. But I think it probably would have worked. Alright. So we've still got some scum built on there. need to get that off which is a little tricky I kind of need three hands for this if I don't get those off then I can't get the stencil down on it Uh, 
at least not flush. Uh, paste, paste, paste. Way too wet. Oh well. We'll just have to bake it for longer. And that will... Oops. Yeah. Get ourselves a bit of a disaster here. I see a trouble with wet paste. There's a real uh, stickiness. And you spend up a bit of time cleaning up. I was a bit careless there. I should have made my selection of the paste a little more carefully. Oh well. Anyway, so like I said, we'll just have to go through a longer bake cycle for this. Too much of a cavity on one ball there. Let's follow down here. Touching you. Stuff it. I'm just going to have to add to it size later. So, which one is that? That's. redo this one because I didn't use dry paste
Yeah, looks surprisingly okay. I can just tilt it up to the edge, I might be able to see if the... Uh, nothing's standing out strikingly, other than the fact that that's a bit of a crazy cut on the edge there. It's not very square. It could be just an optical illusion. We've got a bit of a drifter there. So we'll drop some flux on that, reflow it again. Hopefully everything will even up. And we'll drop that back into the alcohol bath. Unwanted hair there. Oh, I sure hope this SMC works. Should cool down enough. Bloody hair. Still got some more junk up here to get rid of. More hair. Wow, they're just everywhere, these hairs. Uh, some definitely different size balls there. The question is, is it bad enough to warrant messing around with it? Well, these guys here are a little bit on the small side. But they are on the outside, so they will allow me to see if they run into any trouble. 
So I'd say it's worth the risk. Let's get this underway. It's getting late. Very late. Two o'clock now. Looking close enough. Hopefully, that should give us a bit of a jump when it uh, is ready to reflow. too much hot air otherwise it will skip off those a little bit particularly as the flux boils up we do need to get some heat soak into the board and I can smell the damn cockroach ball It's just vile. Three, four, five, six. I think we'll go over that. That was a bit of a jump. Hopefully, it didn't cause drama. got these parts over here to deal with too. That little six pinner needs a bit of a clean up. Uh, you got a leg in there, buddy? You still got a leg there? Maybe a bit more flux.
bottom left one is just not coming good yet. Ah, uh, bottom right rather. There we go. All right, we need those replacement parts now. Oh, great. Great. Marvelous. Uh, one of the 2936 has them. It does. Whew, lucky. Notice how there's no bars chip in that position instead it's up there. It look a little dinged up, but uh, I think we'll get away with it. I also got to remove those two. Actually, I might do that first. Would you believe I was grabbing both the microscope? And, oh my goodness, this is really late. Grabbing both the uh, soldering iron and the hot air station to get these off at the same time. Hello, Tantalum. Pick up both at once. And someone hasn't prepared the pads. Why hasn't someone prepared the pads? Come on, beep. Here's the $5 bet of the day is, can I get both of them back down? Need those two resistors. I will not be doing both of those simultaneously though.
Hmm, you look a little gnarly. How bad are you? Hmm, maybe I can just put some flux around and clean up your joints. Getting the whole aggressive the back off. I'd say we can have a shot of seeing if this powers up. Okay, everything's a bit of a mess. So I'm not gonna put that CPU back on. CPU heatsink rather, I mean. Alright, it's not going to be permanently because it's going to go through ultrasonic so it's going to come off anyway. This is just for testing. So the fact that I haven't put the... Uh, let's see, the transfer compound on properly is not going to be a big issue. First thing on the list is going to be, can we get a fan spin? We'll take it from there. Originally this came in, it wasn't even booting, so see how far we can go. Oh, we got a green. Oh, we got a fan spin. Aha. Alright. That's a good start. Let's see if we can get a screen up. We'll just turn that off. Fume hood off. Uh, we don't seem to have fan spin this time. What did we do that time? Uh, so we could have some other issues at hand here still. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I can't remember if these ones by default come up with the grey screen and then flash a black folder or whether it's the other way around. Again, the lack of constant daily experience with these tends to come and bite me in the butt because I don't know whether I'm looking at a fault or whether I'm just impatient. Certainly I don't expect a folder yet. Ah, there we go. Alright, so we're good. We are booting and everything, so that's a good sign. So from here, oh yeah, I can already start to smell the cockroach smell. This is going to go into the ultrasonic to get rid of that god-awful smell. Anyway, we'll leave it at that for now. Thanks for watching.